Okay. All right, hopefully y'all can see me. I think you can. All right, um, I'm about to do something that is going to be viewed as dangerous, and I'm actually pointing this up so I look taller. Not really. I'm too lazy to put the tripod all the way up. Uh, as you can see here, I have a, a wheel for, off the sprayer. Now, I've had problems with these sprayer wheels many times. I'll take you outside real quick and show you what I've got here. Uh, what I've had is, and you can see what I've done to repair it, and it's a lousy repair. I actually cut a piece of another rim out and laid it over the top of it, but then it decided it would break out there also. So this patch is no freaking good. Uh, it's just not, it's not working. It's not working for me, it's not working for anyone. So I found a company that actually makes these plates and they're nothing really too special. They're just a half inch thick plate of steel and of course you need to have the right, you know, they're tapered on the inside and I spoke with the guy and he's like, well, you can you can bolt through, but because of my, you can bolt, you just put them on the outside, bolt them through, and if your studs are long enough, then you can just weld them on the back side, and then you'll be okay, because it'll take the pressure away. Well, that would have been okay if I didn't have all that other stuff that was welded to the outside of the rim. And because it's welded to the outside of that rim, I am going to be on it. Oh, you're all crooked. Hey, because it's welded to the outside of that rim, I actually have to get rid of that. So the other option is to actually cut the rim out with a torch, set the uh, new piece of steel on the inside of that rim as best you can, square as you can, half inch, you know, it's a half inch thick. So, uh, you know, and then run a bead of weld all the way around the inside and the outside of the rim. Now, that is where things get a little funny, whether it's dangerous or not. Um, the dangerous thing is not here. You can do whatever you want here with the, with the uh, tire and a welder. What you don't want to do when you're going to weld on a rim with a tire still mounted, and I'm sure there's somebody out there you can never be too safe, which you're 100% correct. You can never be too safe when it comes to these things, but I've dealt with this before in the past, and I'm not scared. Let's put it that way. I know that I'm not going to be doing something that is going to cause this tire to blow up in my face, killing me. I do actually enjoy my life, and I don't want to die just yet. But if you're going to weld on a rim, like say if you're going to weld here or here, which I don't know why anybody would ever do that, but um, I've seen that people do weird things like that. and Or even here, this could be, because it's so close to this, the heat will transfer, actually igniting the rubber on the inside here, and then it spikes in pressure and causes a major, major problem called an explosion in your face, which will kill you. And it's not something that happens, you know, it can happen immediately. It can happen five minutes later. It could happen up to four hours later. Uh, if you weld on the bead of the of the tire, it's not something that ever should happen. So, um, yeah, don't do that stuff. So, with me doing the center of this rim, it's far enough away from the tire, and I should be okay. Should be okay. I will be okay. Uh, I've welded on these before, but just as a precautionary thing, I may just go ahead and wow, take the uh, valve core out of there which probably shouldn't be a bad idea either because there was a steel gizmo there that's that's not there. Even if you weld on the rim and you deflate the tire, the uh, and if it does decide it's going to blow up in your face, the uh, just taking the valve core out is not enough of a pressure relief to compensate for what's about to happen. The pressure rises inside the tire so incredibly fast that it will blow up even if the damn valve core is out. You can go to YouTube and look at welding tire explosions. I know Chucky2009 did a video the other day. I didn't get to watch it because, quite honestly, I already know the information. But uh, he did it for people that don't know the information and that could possibly get themselves into some serious trouble. Um, I probably should watch this video before I post this, but I, I'm not going to because I just don't have time. Uh, but anyways, what I'm going to start by doing is actually torching out the center of that thing and, uh, you know, and I'll go from there. I've already got it affixed with two 5 8 inch bolts. They are lined up about as close as they could ever be. 
uh, to the original, you know, center or as close to center as possible, I would definitely say that they are perfect. So I've bolted them fast, and what I'm going to do is just torch it out, torch it out around there, and then I'm going to knock it out, unbolt those two bolts, unbolt those two bolts, and then I'm going to slip it in there uh, halfway through, tack it, 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 and then zip it up with the uh, zip it up with the uh, MIG welder. So that's what my plan is. So stay tuned because here it comes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay, so the inside of this thing, uh, the inside welds were not nearly as nice. My battery ran out, that's why you didn't get footage of the inside welding. Uh, I should have, in hindsight, it's 2020. What I should have done was actually grind out the uh, tacks that I did, but because what happened was I got lost, and I'll show you where I got lost. <laughs> I would. Every time I would get to where there was a tacked piece, or you know where I had tacked it, it would start to climb, and then I would, I would do something like that and get a little bit lost. So anyway, with that being said, I just, I just went with it. I lightly ground the outside of it, or this is actually the inside of the tire. You're never going to see that, and that is, it's okay. I'm okay with that. It looks pretty good to me. I'm sure there's a critic out there saying I did it all wrong and it's going to fail, but that's okay because I don't mind, you know. Uh, farming is failing, as the Stony Ridge farmer would say. Uh, sometimes farming is failing, and then you learn from there. But I've welded a lot of things that have stuck together for many, many years, and I don't think this is going to fail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you back in the tripod. I'm going to set you up, and, uh, you know, yeah, I'm going to set you up, and I'll show you the outside of the damn thing. The one that is visible. I think it looks okay. Let's see if I got the... <clears throat> There, you see me drop my nuts. Okay, so the outside of this rim is a lot easier to deal with because this is a half inch thick plate of steel. I'm going to grind the outside of this before I go over there anyway. Now there is two sides of this plate. Of course the inside is flat and the outside actually has tapers where the studs go on and uh, I don't know why they don't, it doesn't really matter because these are flat face lug nuts. Um, I'm going to see if I can find some actual tapered lug nuts though to put on there because I honestly think that those would probably hold up a little better as far as staying, you know, keeping them tight. 
I never really cared for the flat faced ones. They, I don't know. Maybe I'll just use the old flat faced ones. I might have some new ones. I don't know. But anyways, uh, what I did was I flat welded the back of it. I had ground out the back of the rim, obviously, uh, making a 100% uh, total weld in there. Um, this outer one I had set out. So this this one here, I think, is a 3 16 inch thick plate of steel, whereas this half inch or 5 16 plate steel. And then it's, uh, I put the half inch in there, and of course there was a little bit of a step. So I think it was 5 16 I'm pretty sure it's 5 16 It might be 3 8 I don't know. 1, 2, 3 8 yeah. An eighth and eighth quart. No, it's five sixteenths for sure. Five sixteenths inch plate steel. That's what this rim was made out of. Uh, so that really actually gave me a lot more surface to weld because it's on that bevel. You know, so it's beveled in, and then of course it's got this flat side here, so it's actually on the bevel. Anyway, whatever. It is in there. It is not coming out now. Why am I doing this? You might add. Why, ask. Why don't you just go ahead and buy a new rim? Well, I would love to go buy a new rim, but uh, if I bought that rim from, say, Univerfirth or Unverfirth, I guess, Univerfirth, Kill Brothers, I think, is owned by Univerfirth now, or Univerfirth owns Kill Brothers, or one or the other. I think Kill Brothers was bought out, but anyways, whatever. Um, that rim would be $1,000, okay? I don't want to spend $1,000. I'm sorry, I just don't. Uh, so I decided I'm not going to spend $1,000. Now, if I'd had this rim made, by a rim shop, this would have cost me $600 per side, you know, so uh, $2,000 from Unverfirth, it would have been the same, the same type of wheel, only a half inch thick plate, flat plate, which would have worked fine, but there's two grand and it was sprayer, that might only be worth four or $5,000. So if it was at the beginning of the season and it was desperate, I probably would have spent the two grand uh, or I'd had a rim shop, that would have been $600, six, six hundred and twenty, twelve hundred 120, 1200 bucks, for the pair of them and then I would have had to paint them the color that I needed them painted and which again takes time and effort, money, effort, whatever you want to call it. And I just didn't want to do that either. So I said, is there any way I could just buy a plate? And the guy's like, well, yeah, the guy that does has the rim shop, our rim shop supply, he has these plates. Uh, do you need a 14 or a 16? I was like, well, I think a 14 would work just fine in there. I could have did a 16, but this is a 14-inch uh, plate. Now, if I'd have done a 16, a 16-inch one, I, I think I'd have had trouble for the simple reason is this has a taper, okay? And if this is a 14, well, I probably could have gotten away with it if it was 16 because there's an extra inch here and an extra inch there so that would give me 15, 16 there so it probably would have worked out okay but you know what I didn't feel that it was necessary to go any bigger than that uh, all of the all of the pressure is right here or right here on the edge so I think I'll be okay I'm pretty certain I'm safe and uh, I'll be just fine so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop yakking here yes I'm gonna stop yakking and I'm gonna go clean up the threads. It's piss pouring rain again out there, so I couldn't even put fertilizer on if I wanted to. But it's peeing out rain, and I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the lug bolts, or yeah, the lug bolts that are on that thing, or the lug studs, the studs that are on the hub. I'm not gonna put the wheel on because I do wanna put a coat of paint on here just for the simple reason is there's a lot of fertilizer and liquid fertilizer is just hell on new steel and it will just completely make that thing look like a piece of shit. So I gotta put some paint on it and I'm gonna go ahead and grind the the, the welds over splat the splatter or the yeah the splatter from the weld. Uh, extra bits of steel, little droplets that stick fast in my new steel. I'm gonna get that cleaned off of there with the grinder and that'll be that. But anyways, for that, thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. Tomorrow I'll do the other side and maybe you'll get two videos on it because you know what? You never know. One, two, three videos. Why not? Anyways, thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. Bye-bye.